Let's continue on. Uh, top of the hour, you're watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Uh, we continue with this breaking news regarding attorney Michael Avenatti, who has represented adult film star Stormy Daniels and that whole hush money scandal involving the president. Uh, he has now been charged. He, Michael Avenatti, has been charged with extortion, uh, bank fraud, and wire fraud. So prosecutors in both New York and California uh, announcing these charges moments ago. Keep in mind, these are two totally separate cases. All of this coming down on him today. Uh, New York prosecutors first announced Avenatti had been arrested uh, this morning on charges related to this alleged $20 million scheme to extort Nike. And then moments later, federal prosecutors in California announced the bank and wire fraud charges. The federal criminal complaint charges Mr. Avenatti with wire fraud and bank fraud and contains a series of allegations that paint an ugly picture of lawless conduct and greed. On his Twitter account, Mr. Avenatti describes himself as, quote, attorney, advocate, fighter for good, unquote. But the allegations in this case describe something different, a corrupt lawyer who instead fights for his own selfish interests by misappropriating close to a million dollars that rightfully belonged to one of his clients. All right, so standing by for a legal analysis, I've got Renato Mariotti, CNN legal analyst. But Nick Watt, let me start with you there in, uh, in Los Angeles. So you heard from the uh, U.S. attorney there. Uh, talk to me about the charges he faces in California specifically. Well, Brooke, we have learned a lot more about those charges within the past hour. We were told by that U.S. attorney that the maximum statutory sentence for all the charges Avenatti is facing in this case, that would be 55 zero years in jail. Now, of course, that attorney and the IRS investigator were asked about the timing of this arrest. Now, the arrest warrant was issued on Friday, the same day that the Mueller report dropped. They were asked, is there a connection? The answer, an adamant no. They say that this investigation into Michael Avenatti began way back in 2015, and it was a tax payroll investigation, which in 2017 became criminal. Now, the allegations against him are that he lied uh, to try and get more than $4 million in loans from a bank for his various commercial entities, that he also lied to an IRS agent, and that he, in fact, didn't file any personal tax uh, returns at all for three years, while at the same time lying to this bank about how much he had paid in tax. Now, the other string to this bow is the fact that allegedly Michael Avenatti won a settlement back in 2017 for a client he was representing in a intellectual property case. He won a settlement of $1.6 million. He then apparently showed that client a falsified settlement document which said that the money would be paid in March 2018. In fact, these prosecutors allege Avenatti got $1.6 million in January of 2018, and he used that money, which rightfully belonged to his client, he used a lot of that money for his own personal and business expenses. Now, the IRS investigator called that. It, he said it is difficult to imagine a greater betrayal of trust. So those are the charges that Michael Avenatti is facing here in California. But as you say, Brooke, two different investigations that were apparently unrelated, but they do concede that they did coordinate between mm -hmm. the two investigations in order to arrest Michael Avenatti in New York today. Brooke. Nick Watt, thank you for the story in California. As for the story and in this case in uh, New York, we just listened to the U.S. Attorney Jeff Berman a moment ago from the Southern District of New York detailing um, what, 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 what charges now, what, what they dug up on Michael Avenatti, what he's, was, what he's charged uh, with. And so this is all tied, Renato, to this extortion plot against Nike. Uh, take a listen. Through the alleged course of conduct, Avenatti used legal terms like claims, and settlements and retainers. But these were mere devices to provide cover for Avenatti's extortionate demands for a massive payday for himself. By engaging in the conduct alleged in the complaint, Avenatti was not acting as an attorney. A suit and tie doesn't mask the fact that, at its core, this was an old-fashioned shakedown. So, Renato, here's my first question. Out of Mr. Berman's mouth, uh, saying that this was the, what, the first line out of his mouth, this is not aggressive advocacy, perhaps anticipating what Michael Avenatti's defense may be. 
How effective, though, might that defense actually be, and how, how, how much of a slam dunk is this case? Well, the Southern District of New York case is not a slam dunk. In fact, there is a very difficult legal line between aggressively negotiating to get a settlement and extortion. Now, Mr. Avenatti appears to have crossed that line if the allegations uh, that were made by the Southern District of New York are accurate. And really, to me, the turning point there is that he seems to be seeking um, uh, money for himself for this investigation that he was going to be doing, as opposed to really seeking anything for his client uh, that would be, help, you know, focusing on what his client would want. But it is often the case that in a negotiation, there is going to be, you know, about claims, there is going to be very aggressive tactics that are used, mm -hmm. and courts are very reluctant to characterize that as uh, extortion. I, I'll use, for example, Jeff Bezos uh, went online, the, 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 uh, the founder of Amazon, and talked about how you know, he had these negotiations with the parent company of, of National Enquirer. And I said publicly, I didn't think that that was criminal. But here, uh, Mr. Avenatti has crossed the line, but there, there's definitely a defense there. The other case that we just heard about in California, not so much. Well, hang on. Let me go. So, so the New York case, when I was listening to, to Jeff Berman detailing at the point where clearly, according to the complaint, one of the Nike lawyers was wearing the wire and gets all this, you know, we'll call it colorful language from, from Mr. Avenatti. Uh, Michael Avenatti at one point just says, OK, just pay me twenty two point five million and I'll just ride off into the sunset. If you're Michael Avenatti, how do you defend yourself? What you would have to say is that somehow, you know, you, you, there was a claim against Nike and you were trying, you know, this was going to end up, um, uh, you know, resolving that in some way. The problem for Mr. Avenatti uh, is that that doesn't appear to be strongly related to a claim. In other words, what, what typically you have is a settlement negotiation where you're representing a client that has a claim. And then you were trying to get money for that client. And you could be aggressive and say your client's going to go public uh, mm -hmm. and is about to go public or file a complaint tomorrow unless you pay X amount of dollars. But here it seems very much from the conversations like Mr. Avenatti's focus on enriching himself. But Mr. Avenatti, at least in court with, in front of a jury, would be able to argue that it was an aggressive negotiation. He's a lawyer. He has, I think, an argument to make there. And that, I think, is very, stands in stark contrast to the other case that, that you just spoke okay. about earlier. In California.